What's up? This is Altaric here from SmartBuyTrends.com. Zwift in their latest update made some changes to the Apple TV Zwift app to make it more compatible with the new Apple TV remote. This update was not mentioned in their update log, but users noticed improvement in the remote experience. So did Zwift really fix the remote issues? That's what I'm going to take a look at in this video. Also, many users have been wondering if a universal remote control like this one works with Zwift. So I'll take a look at first the all new Apple TV remote and later in this video I'll take a look at the universal remote control to see if something like this works with Zwift and the Apple TV. And if you find this video helpful please take a quick short second to hit the like button. It helps the video and the channel a lot and also subscribe so you do not miss any videos from me in the future. So first let's take a look at the actual Apple TV remote. As you probably know Apple released an all new Apple TV 2021 a few months back and I have made a couple of videos about that and my experience with it and I predicted that the new Apple TV's remote will not make Zwift experience any better due to Zwift's user interface. The new Apple TV remote has a touchpad and buttons around the touchpad and before this latest Zwift update, Zwift did not respond to these buttons and made it somewhat difficult to navigate the app, particularly the workout selection section. So now the buttons work and all is well, right? Well, sort of. And before you go and buy yourself one, let's take a look at how things work. So I'm going to go through different sections of Zwift, such as the pairing screen, the main menu, route selection menu, workout selection menu and a bunch of others to see how Zwift responds to the remote control and I'll rate each section just for fun. Okay, let's start with the pairing screen uh, since it is the first screen that you see when you log into Zwift. The buttons and touchpad work well moving from each pairing source so all work well with the touchpad and buttons here but let's go to the power and try to pair a power meter or a trainer. The touchpad works well but very slow to respond. Uh, same thing with the bonds. Actually, the bonds just they're extremely slow to respond if they respond at all. So here I'm going to give the touchpad a three out of five stars. The bonds, however, will get two out of five stars. Okay, moving on to the main menu. Everything seems to work well navigating to different areas using the bonds and the touchpad. So I will give it a five star here for both. Now let's try to go and select a route. The touchpad seems to work well here navigating to a specific route. The buttons on the other hand, do not. Pressing the down button move the selection multiple selection at a time rather than one at a time. So selecting a route could be a nightmare and might not even work. So here I'm trying to select the big foothills route using the buttons and I just could not do it. The touchpad however works well. So I'm going to give the touchpad here five stars. The buttons I'm going to give them two. They just did not work for me. Moving on to settings. Everything seems to work well here. The menu responds well to each button press, even moving the slider for adjusting the trainer difficulty and game volumes worked well, actually very well. So the touchpad and button will get five out of five stars here. Let's take a look at the garage. The touchpad seems to work well here, but the buttons work okay navigating right to left or left to right but not up and down. So something seems to be off with the up and down functionality that Zwift might need to take a look at here. I'm going to give the touchpad here a five and the buttons will get uh, a three. Okay, let's go to the workout selection here. This is a true test here because that was just a nightmare to navigate and select a workout because of how the menus are stacked. Uh, the touchpad works well actually and seems to respond a lot better than it used to, but the buttons on the other hand, they just do not. Uh, pressing the down button make the selection jumps all the way down just like in the raw selection menu. Same thing happen when you press the up button and the selection go all the way up rather than one selection at a time. So it is impossible to select a workout that falls somewhere in the middle. However, the touchpad seems to work a lot better than before. So you will have a much better experience using the touchpad here or maybe a combination of both. Uh, going to the FTP slider, if you press the right button to go there, it works well actually, but if you try to move the slider up and down using the buttons, that just does not work so well. And the touchpad is not precise enough if you want to adjust your FTP by a few points. I'm going to give the touchpad here a 4 out of 5 stars. The buttons will get a 1 star here. They just did not work well for me. 
Okay, let's start a ride and see how things work in game. Pressing the up button will bring up the ride menu. Okay, pressing the right button seems to move the menu without a problem. Uh, same thing with the left button. So all is good here using the touchpad and buttons. The buttons here work much better and I'm more likely to use the buttons than the touchpad. So for that, I'm going to give the touchpad a four out of five and the buttons will get five out of five stars. So basically the buttons work well in game in settings and navigating the main menu, I would say that's about it. Still, Zwift has some work to do to fine tune them and make the up and down buttons work a bit more precise. So how about a universal remote? Well, the universal remotes that I have seen only utilize buttons. Uh, this remote I have been using and it actually works very well uh, using the Apple TV. Other apps like Netflix, YouTube, the Apple TV app, the Apple Music app or Spotify all works well using this remote control. However, in Zwift, you still need the touchpad. So maybe in an update or two, Zwift will fix these issues with the bonds and you can fully rely on using the bonds. But for now, I would get this universal remote and I will link to this in the description if you want to replace the old Apple TV remote for something that is cheaper, uh, but do not, and, and I'm saying this, Again, do not get this for Zwift. If that changes in the future, I will let you know, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll get these updates. So overall, the button works maybe 70% of the time. I don't know if Zwift changed something with the touchpad experience because I am finding it much easier to use and more precise than before using the new and the old remote control. And I wonder if you are experiencing the same thing. So let me know down in the comment uh, what's your experience with the touchpad. So overall, I would say if your old remote control with the touchpad still works, I would not go out and upgrade thinking the new remote control is going to give you a better experience with Zwift. If you want to upgrade just to upgrade your Apple TV and your Apple TV experience, go for it. I love my Apple TV uh, 2021. However, uh, I would not upgrade it just for Zwift. The universal remote works about 70% of the time with Zwift but it will not work in selecting routes, workouts, or pairing screen if you have multiple devices uh, to pair. Okay, hope you find this video helpful. Please take a quick second to hit the like button. Also subscribe if you've made it this far in this video and have not subscribed yet. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.